This picture wow. shows a lot of feathers. This is probably the most feathers I've ever seen in, in a nest before. Um, and uh, you know, this would really give a nest away if you if you didn't see the, the female in there. But this is a really great, uh, great picture of a female. Does she, does she pluck some of her um, feathers for brooding? Yeah, they will. But mainly, this is just uh, her kind of uh, rooting around and stuff, you know, falling out. But right here, she's incubating eggs. Is my guess. <laughs> This is that same nest you just saw the video of, and uh, he's looking. The, the male was act. This is the female. The male was actually out uh, doing a lot of hunting. And again, like Lee says, um, they they are a, a perch hunter. So they'll go and they'll find a perch, and they'll sit on a branch no bigger than that right there. It's amazing how big these these creatures are and how light they are. Um, they'll sit on a branch um, about as big as your pinky for uh, a long time. I've sat out there and tried to, uh, you know, out, out, uh, play them and they, they'll outplay me, <laughs> I have to go home. But they'll sit there in the, in the same spot and just watch the ground because they can hear um, the, the rodents on the ground and, it's, and then they'll just pounce right on them. Where are their teeth right there? Where that coat is? Yep. Do the males and the females look alike? Yeah, the males and females look identical. Um, wow. And, and really the only only way you can tell them apart is by the, the vocalizations. Wow. Yeah. So this, this outlet here um, just fledged. Uh, it's about a, uh, two weeks from leaving the nest. Um, we call it fledge when they, when they leave the nest. And this is the, the female. And she's hanging out real close. At first, I thought, "Oh, there's a male," and then then she hooted, and it you know you can tell right away. Um, so she st stood right there with with the outlet, and of course he's got the eyes like, "What are you doing? <laughs> taking a, taking a picture of me?" But these are these are cute guys. Very <laughs> cute. Again, they have the traits of the the. the Adults right away, the, the bright yellow eyes, relatively smaller facial disc, but yellow beak, real downy feathers when they're this young. So this is one of the programs that was started uh, that, that Lee briefly mentioned. This is one of Lee's pictures. This is an artificial platform. Um, you know, overall in general, I would say we're, we're fairly deficit on platform nests. And one of the reasons is because a lot of these big old trees aren't on the landscape anymore. They've either fallen over or um, they just haven't been able to grow big enough. You know, they, they get um, harvested or, or cut for somebody's wood pot or, or something like that. Um, so what was done in the past is let's make some nests similar to a bluebird nest box, but hey, let's make a, a platform nest for great corrals. And if anybody's interested, um, I, I, I don't have any handouts with me tonight, but come up afterwards and give me your, your email, and I'll send you diagrams for this exact platform. But what this does is it provides a, a nest for the great grays. They don't have to build anything at all. It's, it's just a, a kind of a V-shaped platform here with the flat bottom and bolted, uh, screwed or bolted to a tree. And um, this is one um, that, that Lee found, and, and we, we, we don't do a lot of monitoring of these, um, but they're scattered around our forest, and, and when we get out to, when, when I get out to certain areas, uh, I'll go check and, and see if anything's living in them. And um, one, one up by the Highland Snow Park, we, we put several up there, and um, one was, successful had two or three chicks I believe uh, fledge out of it the, the one year and of course uh, it got fairly popular on the, the blogs and um, I think it got loved to death but <laughs> since then it, it hasn't ever um, produced any any offspring or hasn't no, no adults have tried to nest there and I had heard it, it might have blown down so um, anyways um, this might be a fun project for you and the grandkids or you and the kids or whatever to put on your property if you live in some habitat that you might think is, is uh, 
great gray owl habitat. And uh, you would want to be roughly, you know, 50 feet in the air, so you're going to have to figure out how to get all the way up there. <laughs> don't, don't call me. So. <laughs> Other owls that would use this sort of platform are the great horned owls. We, we have had great horns. Lee's got some pictures of some great horns in the same platform, I believe. And then also uh, raven, or, yeah, ravens and, and crows and stuff. So a, a lot of raptors will use these, but they're, they were primarily built in and put up for, for great grays. You have to put the sticks in them too? No, you don't have to put anything in them. Just bare wood. You know, if you wanted to throw some, um, maybe a, a little bit of uh, moss or a bow or two in them, but because they don't have, I don't, they might have some drain holes in them, you wouldn't want to put a lot in there uh, because, again, they're a secondary nester, and, and if there's a bunch of sticks and stuff in there, they, they won't make a nest. They won't, so just having it empties about the best. 